Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? In today's video, I haven't picked a title yet, so fingers crossed that it's something interesting for y'all, but I'm going to be talking about U.S. capitalism and how it hurts Americans, yet they still hate social benefits. And so with that being said, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and let me know down below in the comment section what you think about this type of video. And so it's slowly getting into election time here in the USA. That means a lot of political talking points are being brought up on a more a national scale or a national level and healthcare is always one that pops up around this time. And for me, it's a different outlook now. You guys know how I've always been about US healthcare and how it needs to be changed, how things need to be implemented properly into um, the culture that we have here. But now since going to school and working in the medical field a little bit, I have realized that there are so many more things that need to be changed. And it also just solidifies my views that I had, but with actual real world knowledge and experience. And this video is going to be tailored to a particular group of people in the USA. And it's mostly rural Americans because those are the people that I feel shoot themselves in the foot so often here in the USA. And so I was reading an article, um, talking about how rural Americans tend to be a little bit more conservative while urban Americans tend to be a little bit more liberal. And you guys are probably thinking, what does it have to do with healthcare? Well, I promise you it all correlates and matches in some way, shape or form. So I'm going to use Bavaria as an example because that's where I used to live and I feel they're a wonderful representation when it comes to conservatism in Germany. I mean, you could talk about the east side of Germany as well because I don't know what the hell y'all are doing over there. But in rural Bavaria, a lot of times people will vote for parties that are maybe more religious leaning, that care more about being more frugal with spending and budgeting, but they're still going to vote for policies that are beneficial to everyone, like universal healthcare. This is what this video is about, so we're using universal healthcare. So even though these people might be the most conservative individuals that you know, they're still going to vote for policies that are genuinely socially beneficial to others, including themselves. I actually grew up in rural Florida. Believe it or not, I'll put a map so you guys can see the rural areas in the state of Florida. I lived in one of the green areas. And it's interesting for me to see it from my perspective because I've lived in rural B Bavaria. I lived in rural Florida. I grew up my whole life in rural Florida. I live in now a sort of bigger city in Florida. I've lived in a metropolitan city in Germany. And I can also make those comparisons as well. And so that is why I think this video resonates so much with me or these points resonate a little bit more with me than other videos that I've made. I saw another article talking about the Affordable Care Act, which is AKA Obamacare. I'm going to be posting a video talking about people pissing each other off here in the USA and how it's a bad thing. Yet here I am doing it because I know it bothers people when I say Obamacare. But Obamacare, ACA, had a Medicaid expansion act that would expand Medicaid coverage to nearly all adults with incomes up to 138% of the federal poverty level. Out of the 50 states, 41 of them adopted and implemented these practices. Do you know what state was part of the not um, Florida? <laughs> but digging a little deeper, there were more articles talking about the correlation that came with rural areas that did not adopt and implement the Medicaid expansion, which a lot of right leaning conservatives here in the USA deemed it as socialism at its finest. Those places were experiencing a higher rate or a higher decline. There's a fly right here, you guys. So if he's like flying in the camera, I'm so sorry about that. Those places were experiencing seen a higher decline or a higher rate of hospitals closing in rural areas. And I was just like, 
That's interesting. The people that are usually struggling the most in the USA tend to live in rural America. So those people not only are voting to not have social benefits, but those voting practices that they are taking part in are then leading to less medical care for themselves in their communities. So then I went down a rabbit hole of why is universal health care bad? Why universal health care is not good for you? Why socialism health care is not good? All of these key tag words that people use to talk about something like in Germany, universal health care, and why it is not good for the average American. And <laughs> when I tell you the things that I found, the counter arguments were ridiculous. But something that I saw all the time was comparing the USA to Canada. And I'm going to use that for the next like chunk of this video because so many people were writing about the horrible medical system in Canada. So the first one is long wait times. The second one is not enough physicians. The third one is not enough nurses. And the fourth one is usually not enough beds. And the crazy thing about all of this is that it can be verified and fact checked relatively easily because this information is readily available on the internet. So tackling the first point, which is long waiting lines, this is a scare tactic that is constantly brought up as a negative to universal health care. They say, look at Canada, look at Germany, look at, I don't know, Norway, just throwing random places out there. Look at how long these people have to wait for important life-saving operations. And always my counter argument is, have you ever been to an ER in the USA? If you are not having life-threatening medical issues, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be waiting hours. Worst case scenario is that you're gonna die in the waiting room. When you're going to a normal healthcare facility, doctor's office, wanting to get a simple procedure done or a simple checkup done, nine times out of 10, you are gonna have faster service because you are also gonna be paying, I don't know, double, quadruple, what your European, actually rest of the world counterpart pays. So combining the other three points of not enough physicians, not enough nurses, not enough hospital beds, according to Google, in the USA, you're looking at 2.6 doctors per 1,000 people. In Canada, you're looking at 2.7 doctors per 1,000 people. In the USA, you're looking at 2.37 beds per 1,000 people. In Canada, you're looking at 2.58 hospital beds per 1,000 people. And when you're getting into nurses, you're looking at 12 per 1,000 in the USA and 10.3 per 1,000 in Canada, which actually puts Canada in the USA, and we can even throw Germany in the mix at a similar standing ground where one of the biggest discrepancy comes from or where one of the biggest discrepancy lies is in the percentage of hospital beds that are full in the usa it is 64 percent in canada it is 91 percent and germany i don't remember the exact percentage but i will put it up in the video so you guys can see and what this tells me is that people in the usa are not going to the hospital. People in Canada are going to the hospital. Why is that, you ask? Because they actually have health care. Are they probably going to the hospital for a minor cough and cold? Maybe. Is that necessary? No, not really, but they can do it. But in the USA, people aren't going to the hospital for major medical issues. So that means people are letting their problems fester, grow, and turn into these malignant, very bad things. And then you're having more complicated health issues later on because you're too afraid to go to the hospital, to go to the doctor, because you don't have enough money. According to the Kaiser Family Foundation, the percentage of US doctors in adult primary care has been declining for years and is now about 25%. So not only are you not having you know doctors visits hospital visits that are maybe necessary in your life due to the financial burden that might be placed on you you're also not having these things because you don't have a primary care doctor because maybe they're declining in your area rural America hello if you do have the right insurance and they accept it you're probably gonna have to 
to wait a couple of weeks or a couple of months to actually have an appointment seeing a physician, or you'll be introduced to the concierge service that a lot of primary physicians have implemented in their practices, which is basically a monthly or yearly annual fee that you have to pay in order to be seen by the doctor. And this doesn't even include all of the money that you're going to have to pay for other services, other surgeries, other treatments that you might need. And these fees could range anywhere from, I believe the lowest I saw was maybe 1000 a year to upwards of 20,000 a year. And I know a few people that work at doctors that have this type of of business structure and a lot of people pay for it here in the USA. So then you have millions of people that are suffering medically yet actively voting against themselves and actively voting not to end their suffering. So I'm sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place in the USA because on one hand, I want to be empathetic and sympathetic, but on the other hand, I'm like, why do you keep doing this to yourself? Maybe it's a lack of education. Maybe it's a lack of motivation. I honestly don't know what it is, but I just am always thinking to myself, there is a better way of life. And all you have to do is not vote continuously against yourself. And so at the end of the day, due to school and being introduced to the medical field at a more microscopic or magnified level, I see a lot more issues than what I saw to begin with. Because yes, I've always been an advocate for universal healthcare. Yes, I've been an advocate for taking care of yourself. Yes, I've been an advocate for getting medical help. But then when I dig a little deeper and I see it firsthand, what is happening in the USA that the system is against you yet you're still voting for the same system. <laughs> I'm like, can there really be any change here? And so it cannot be that capitalism is killing you, that it continuously beats you down yet social benefits would be your demise or voting for a system of social benefits would be your demise. You'd rather have capitalism stab you in the back than having a little bit of social equity. I am done with this video, you guys. I cannot wait until, you know, November or September, October, November rolls around and I get to see all of the craziness that's about to ensue here in the USA because it's already started and it's getting on my nerves already. And so with that being said, please, if you're an American, I know I'm always talking into the void, but maybe one person hears this, vote accordingly. And so with that being said, thank you so much for watching you guys. I love y'all. Have a wonderful day and bye. living the life of a pink queen yes <laughs> something's wrong with me y'all that is for damn sure this video is supposed to be something serious and me talking about being a pink queen let me see if i want to put my hands in my jacket or not today hold on how do i get my fingers in here oh there should be a hole okay i like this <laughs> okay so um so hi everyone